Alright, this is uh, that one guy. I guess I'm going by the private military company on uh, YouTube now, but um, anyways, what I've got set up is I'm doing a little bit of a docking mission, and by docking I mean orbital rendezvous because I'm in 1.4. So what I'm doing is I'm waiting for that to get about there, I'm taking my ship, throttling it up, and firing the hole. So, a couple things. Um, Kerbal Space Program is the shit. Uh, and I have been having a little trouble getting to the moon lately with... Um, you know what? No, I don't need to talk about that. So anyways, this is the orbiter. Pretty basic. It's got uh, these right here. The uh, Just three liquid rocket boosters. Under that is uh, another liquid rocket. And then this is the actual... Uh, command module um, up here. Uh, a little bigger than I generally like them to be, but I'd rather have the fuel than not. So, um, if you want to copy this design, feel free. It's pretty simple. It's just three boosters on a rocket on a command module. So the best way to get into orbit with this is um, wait till about 5,000 meters, throttle down just a little bit, and begin a 90 degree roll to 60 degrees above the horizon. Now, the only thing about this ship is it does like to roll. Uh, the roll is kind of severe. And, um, yeah. Alright, that is... Come on now. There we go. Alright, now once you get that, you can go ahead and throttle back up. Um, yeah. So, what we've got here is um, the Orbiter B, which is just the same thing. I just named it B so that I could keep them straight when I'm orbiting. Uh, I might even make an Orbiter C if I want to triple round it with them, but... Um, no, I'm really looking forward to KSP 1.5, or 0.15, I guess. Um, because I've been meaning to uh, do some docking and station building. And, uh, I don't know, I've had some ideas for, like, um, terrestrial bases and stuff like that. But, uh, that's unimportant and probably going to get a bunch of flamey comments because of that. Alright, just remember to um, reboot your SAS when you do that. Otherwise, you're going to be twirling around and uh, that will offset your orbit a bit. Now, um... One thing I do like about uh, 0.14 is um, that you can actually see the debris tracks, which, uh, yeah. Um, I do have a piece of debris, if you uh, saw that. I'm just looking at my fuel status. Alright, I'm fine. I do have a piece of debris right here. Um, that's from the Orbiter B, but not this Orbiter B. Funny story. Uh, I was um, doing an early... Uh, maneuvering thing to try and rendezvous um, two ships at that altitude. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I accidentally poked a hole in one of the fuel tanks, I guess, because um, the fuel tank was dead, it wouldn't light. So I uh, had 15 guys sacrifice their lives trying to develop a rescue craft, which I actually have one now, so that's nice. It worked, and, uh, yeah, 15 guys to rescue three from space. That's, um, that's definitely not good. But I suppose I should start to think about not rambling anymore because I'm coming up on 75,000 meters, which is where I cut my engines. Um, then while you're still in the atmosphere, I like to roll. And I mean, mind you, you're not much in the atmosphere. I like to uh, roll over to 10 degrees above the horizon on the due eastern heading. Uh, so then I relight the engines once I'm there, and uh, that will actually spread out my um, uh, my flight trajectory. Um, so yeah, I guess you could also use this as a how to get into orbit tutorial. It's not too terribly difficult, um, although frustrating, uh, because I remember um, back when I first started out, I could not orbit to save my life. Um, 
I don't know, I guess I just didn't really grasp all the speeds that were involved in orbiting. So that's just a little course correctment right there. Um, so once this fuel tank burns out, uh, I jettison it and then I generally wait until I get to about the apoapsis uh, before resuming a positive 10 degree burn on 90. Um, so yeah, we light that. And it's surprising, a lot of your fuel is um, is used getting into orbit, um, but once you're uh, once you're in orbit, I, you don't use that much at all. Um, so all I really, really want from this burn is to get a periapsis. Because uh, right now we have a highest point of our flight, but we don't have a lowest point because uh, we're not going fast enough. Now, that'll work, that'll work, that'll work. Now, if I just let this fly, eventually I would, uh, eventually I would come back down to turbine. I suppose it's called, but... Uh, yeah, what I'm going to do is, uh, hopefully this is, hmm, all right, it's not above 150,000 meters, uh, which is when I can time compress uh, to an actual reasonable length, but um, as you see, I'm actually outpacing the Orbiter B right now, but that's just because I'm on a lower uh, orbit. So, yeah, here's where KSP gets a little bit boring. I'm just time compressing and uh, moving some crap around on my desk. Yeah. All right, and that's what you call close enough for Kerbal rocket science. Let's go ahead and put on the RCS just because it makes more sense than just free floating in space due to some like physics black magic. I don't know. Actually, a <laughs> uh, little background on me. I used to be a physics major, and then. Yeah, I'm not anymore. <laughs> um, so what you're going to want to do is, uh, because I'm ahead of my uh, target ship, I'm just going to pop out about 15,000 meters past it, and I don't have to be too terribly exact, because all I'm going to do is I'm just going to line up, fire my thrusters in the opposite direction until I get down to 15.0, and then flux. Uh, so I'm just going to turn off my RCS now. And to save myself a little time, I'm going to roll 180 degrees to a heading of uh, 270, uh, zero degrees above the horizon. So what that will do is when I get over to my apoapsis, uh, I'm just waiting to hit 50,000. Yeah. Alright, so, now, I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, that one guy, that ship is way the hell in front of that other ship. Well, it's also moving faster, but not by much, as you see I'm actually slowing down, because this one's moving at 1980.4, and now I'm moving at 1880. Now, given that, the Orbiter B will catch up to uh, the Orbiter, but uh, I need to actually get it onto the same uh, orbit. So, what we're going to do is we're going to just burn near the apoapsis because uh, that will actually change the periapsis uh, more than the apoapsis. As you see, the apoapsis really isn't increasing a whole lot, and that's what you want, especially for achieving a circular orbit. Um, yeah. Now, this is normally the point when... Oh, God. Hi. Wow. Shit. Uh, fuck. Oh, well, that's probably going to be bleeped out on YouTube. Um... Damn it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Uh, that's 15.9, that's... Okay. Now we're actually close enough that the burner would be too powerful, and uh, you really can't get good results with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to futz around with the... Um, with the RCS system. Which, I guess, that's like saying ATM machine. But you know what? Whatever, I don't care, man. 
Yeah, like I was attempting to say earlier before I flipped out uh, because my orbits were getting screwy. Uh, oh, beautiful. I can actually show you this now. Um, as you see, my orbits aren't quite lined up, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll to bearing 180, and the closer you can get that to there, that's good. As you see, I'm going to cr intersect this orbit. Now, by doing this, I can actually futz around with the angle that I'm orbiting. It's called the normal and the anti-normal. I can't really keep them straight in my head because I didn't really learn that much about them when I was... Oh, bollocks. Ah! Shit! <laughs> okay, um, you guys are probably wondering what, how the hell I got, uh, well, maybe you guys are actually seeing why I'm not a physicist anymore. Um, alright, yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do what I call a correctional burn, and, uh, as you see, that's actually leveling it out, and, you know, it's not off by that much, I'm just gonna get... RCS on and give it a little futz with the um, with the uh, RCS. So now we're on what I call fast track to intercept. Um, give it a couple of orbits, and uh, this will intersect with that. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna have to make this video two parts because I'm extremely cheap and don't want to actually buy software for this. So yeah, screenshot automatic. Love ya. Um. Yeah, so I guess if you want to see how to actually rendezvous, watch the next video. If you're good with just knowing how to orbit, we're good. Uh, the only other thing, I guess, if you're not going to watch the other video, uh, two things. One, if you keep your ship on the normal or the anti-normal, it will literally stay in the same orientation to uh, whatever body you're orbiting. However, it will roll, so um, it's less movement than flipping end over end. Uh, if you're uh, on the um, TTV or the uh, what I call the the orbit burn, um, and then to get out of this, uh, what I do is I um, burn against my orbit until my uh, periapsis is roughly 30,000 meters, and uh, that brings you in nice and slow and doesn't actually have G forces enough to kill your crew, which is good because the first couple of times I tried that I did. Okay, I'm gonna shut up and make another video.